Hi there, Stefan from Hoya. I'm here to introduce you to the incredible individual multifocal. So, what is new about the incredible and why do we call it the individual? I'm going to give you guys two examples. The first one is a very simple one. In my hand, and I'm going to tilt it a little bit, I'm holding an ordinary single vision lens. Now, to look through a single vision lens is quite a simple optical system. When I look through this, everything is quite clear. But the moment I start tilting this lens forward, suddenly everything behind it starts to distort, not as clear anymore. The same thing will happen if I tilt this lens maybe the opposite direction, maybe around the vertical axis. And again, everything starts to distort. What will happen if I move this lens further from my eye or closer? Again, I change the optics. And this is where the incredible individual multifocal comes in. So the second example I want to give you is the optometrist is sitting in his test room. He's producing a script with a patient in front of him and this patient is looking through either a trial frame or the foropter head. Now, both of those usually are perfectly vertical, perfectly straight in front of the patient with a very close working distance to the eye. The optometrist generates this script. The patient walks out into the front of the practice and now selects his frame. Now, I'll show you on my own frame. When we look at my frame, for instance, my frame is not perfectly flat. There's an angle to my frame, different from the absolute vertical. If I hold my frame like this, it's also not flat. There's a curve to it. We call it the frame face form angle. And then, this being a metal frame, it's got adjustable nose bridges, so we can adjust how far this lens is from my eye. But let's say it was a plastic frame and that would sit a lot closer. So if small things like tilt and distance makes a difference on a single vision lens, think of the difference it'll make to a person getting a multifocal with different zones and different strengths. That is why we are introducing the incredible individual multifocal to you. It's a multifocal that now with the latest technology allows us to give you a lens where you can put in a couple of extra parameters and we can tailor make a lens for your patient for the specific frame he's choosing, whether that frame being different one year to the next. The first of these new parameters that we need is the frame corneal distance. Now the frame corneal distance is the measurement from the tip of the eye to where the lens would sit in the frame. On the screen in front of you, there is a default value of 12.3 millimeters. That is the measurement that you will get if you don't specify any. But we can give you a value, a minimum of seven millimeters to a maximum of 25 millimeters. That is easily measurable just with an ordinary PD ruler that's held next to the patient while he's wearing his frame. The second parameter is the wearer's pantoscopic angle. Now, the pantoscopic angle is the difference of the angle that the frame would make with a perfect vertical line at 90 degrees. The default value there being 8.3 degrees, we can input a value of zero to a maximum of 25 degrees. And that we will measure, we will provide you with a protractor at the end. The last parameter we are looking at is the frame face form angle. Let's define it as the angle where the frame would wrap the face or where the frame is slightly curved instead of being perfectly flat. The default value being 4.4 degrees with a minimum of 0 degrees and a maximum of 15. To measure the frame face form angle we will provide you with a chart such as this. You will literally just place the frame on the chart and read off the frame face form angle on the protractor to the right. Next let's look at some range information. So first of all, the lens will be available in three materials. There's CR39, Protect Your Eyes 1.53 Index, and Protect Your Eyes 1.6 Index. Looking at the power ranges, the spherical equivalent will go to a plus six to a minus eight. And interestingly enough, on the 1.6, we can provide you with a plus six to a minus 10 diopter sphere. This is because the new technology allows us for a flat base curve and we can produce a much more aesthetically pleasing lens design. Cylinder power goes up to a minus four diopter sole. And then another interesting addition 
is the addition will go from a 0.75 all the way to 350. A 0.75 addition, as you know, will give you great peace of mind with that first multifocal wearer that's not quite ready to accept multifocals and it find it difficult to adapt to them. Let's look at the coatings available. We've got the hard coat and the anti-reflective coat. And of course, the patient can also decide to go with clear or climate eyes. Prism available will be up to three prism diopters per lens. Now, important, corridor length. If the lens is ordered with a default short corridor, you will be getting an 11 millimeter corridor just as you are currently. The 11 millimeter short corridor will have a minimum fitting height of 14 millimeters. If you order a default long corridor, you will be getting a 15 millimeter corridor with a minimum fitting height of 18 millimeters, just as things are currently. You can now decide to go with a different corridor. You can now specify a corridor length that varies in increments of one millimeter ranging from either 11 millimeters all the way up to 16 millimeters. Guys, I need to stress something here. I don't want you to get in a panic because of all these new parameters. You can still order the lens as you've been doing up to now. So there are new parameters you can input if you so wish. This will tailor make the lens for the frame, for the script, for this patient. If you don't, we will provide you a lens on default values, meaning you will still get better optics than what you've been getting with the first generation of incredible multifocal. The in incredible multifocal now, the new one, the individual, will be coming as a default short corridor and long corridor. And if you don't specify anything, you will be getting the long corridor. Let's look at the manual order form for the incredible individual. Section one will be the ordinary information we input every day. It's first the lens name, the material, we look at the coating, whether you want photochromic or clear, or specify a fixed tint to the right. Section two will be ordinary script in placement like usual. And then we get to section three. We've got the monocular PDs for right and left, as well as the eye point heights for both eyes. But now you can decide whether you wanna use the default values or input your own values. So frame corneal distance, you'll input the measured value, where is pantoscopic angle, and the frame face form angle. The default values will be shown in the squares just below these values. To the left, you'll see corridor length. Your default short corridor will be 11 millimeters, or the default long corridor, 15 millimeters. Again, you can specify what you want between 11 and 16 millimeters. Then section four for the practices that like to cut and fit their own lenses. So we'll need the A value, the frame width, or the horizontal width of the B box value, the B height, which is the vertical component of the box value, and the DBL, or the distance between lenses, as usual. So for the people familiar with Hoyerlog, nothing really has changed. It's first just the reference, the patient name, whether you want it cut or uncut, always help with METs. At the selection of the lens name, you will now see there is incredible eye and the index next to it. There won't be an incredible eye long or short because you will input your corridor length later on. You will select your tint and your coating as normal. This will happen left and right, and then, very importantly, we go to the special instruction column below the script, and we're gonna start on the right-hand side. To open the special instructions, you press F2. The following screen will appear. I want to draw your attention to the lower left-hand side corner, when there, you will tick corridor range, and to the right of it, you can now input the corridor that you want. 11 millimeters all the way up to 16. As I said, default for short will be 11 and default for long will be 15 millimeters. To the right of it, we'll use the vertex distance. Always choose the option frame corneal vertex distance as shown in the second option. And to the right of it, the value. Below that, we'll input the wearer's pantoscopic angle, the value to the right, and lastly, the face angle, which is the frame face form angle as measured with a protractor.
we are going to mimic the special instructions of the right eye to the same with the left eye. So on the left hand side page you'll see it looks very familiar. Again corridor range with the value to the right. Vertex distance, we again choose the frame corneal vertex distance and the value and then the wearer's bandoscopic angle to the right. There is no frame face form angle on this page as we only have to input it on the right hand side. If you get your lenses back and you have specified the additional parameters, the actual script of the lens might differ from what you've ordered. Remember now, the lens will be tailor made for the frame and when the frame is on the patient's face, it might actually sit a little differently to what the script was when you ordered the lenses. So that on the envelope of the package you receive the lenses in, we will provide you what we call the reference power. Now the reference power is the new power that was allocated to the lens because of the way the parameters have changed it. You will then be able to check the lens powers relative to the reference power and not to the original order that was placed. With all this said, I want to urge you, please try this new technology. If you've got any questions on measurements, how to take them, please contact your area sales manager or your closest Hoya branch. With all that said, thank you and happy selling.